Joining me now from Alexandria, Virginia, Charlie Sauer, president of the Market Institute. It's great to see you. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. So, Charlie, uh, is this the end of the mom and pop shops, if you will, as Amazon and these bigger corporations continue to grow? I, I don't think so. I think there's always going to be a role for us to go uh, shopping down Main Street and browsing the stores. But I do think that, uh, you know, Walmart and Amazon and Target have helped us increase our quality of life by lowering the cost of goods that we use every day. And I really find these attacks on them creating jobs uh, appalling. I remember when the coronavirus first hit, um, you know, everybody kind of left the stores and our connection to the world was the Amazon box that kept showing up on our door. And the fact that the workers were actually going in and helping us get those supplies, it helped us uh, stay as a household um, in su well supplied and safe at home. So uh, these attacks I find um, troubling. But you could see maybe why some of the business owners were pretty upset. For example, a furniture shop owner. Uh, they're shut down, but then you can go buy furniture at Target or somewhere else because that's an essential business. As far as the leadership deciding uh, one business should stay open versus another, I think that that is a major issue. In Amazon's case, that was the delivery service uh, to your door. So I don't find that as the uh, as the same, but we still come to the same conclusion that government definitely overstepped its role by making arbitrary decisions on which businesses could stay open and couldn't stay open. I still think that the delivery service itself um, is uh, w would have been one of the last things that government came after. Yeah, and certainly things are changing. People would prefer to get, th even before the pandemic, people like to get their groceries delivered to their home, uh, save them a lot of time, a lot of hassle, especially in the bigger cities. If you think about parking and all the inconveniences and the weather and everything else. Um, but what did you make of the reports slamming Amazon, saying that they were falling short of their commitment to uh, to social welfare? You know, there's a lot of po uh, public policy attacks on Amazon, and I think that this is just an offshoot of those. You see somebody who is big, and then they see it as kind of this big bag of money that they can come attack. And the fact is, is that Amazon employed a lot of people at the beginning of the pandemic when other people were losing their jobs. They're continuing to employ people. Uh, during the pandemic, they were supplying masks to people early on. They were doing temperature checks early on and they were paying for sick leave. I think that attacks on a big business would be better served by people trying to start their own businesses and grow their own startups. And if they want to start them in a different way, if they think that they can do something that's more socially responsible, I'm all for them trying to start a business competing with Amazon. I'm sure that there would be demand for that. I think that Amazon would probably still win. Yeah, I don't know if you saw this, but the uh, grim statistics saying that 87% of New York City restaurants and bars couldn't pay their full rent in August. And uh, obviously, um, you know, this is going to have a huge effect on the city there. I mean, do you think that they'll be able you know, to recover? When I, yeah, when I start thinking about the economy um, 10 years out, five years out, three years out, um, there's going to be a lot of changes. I've tried to figure out when my family and I would go back to see a movie and a, sit in a movie theater, which was something that we did before the pandemic. Um, I think that that's going to be a long time. I think that we're going to see a lot of closures in restaurants. I think that there was also a lot of economists that talked about kind of the over-restaurantization of the U.S. Um, pre-pandemic. So they were also at a bad point. They were at kind of the peak of a bubble. And to have the pandemic hit is not the way you want to see that bubble burst. You Bubble bursting is always painful, but to have it burst in a pandemic makes it even that much more painful. Look, I paid my way through college by waiting tables. I love the restaurant industry. I love the entertainment industry. Um, but it's going to turn over. There's a lot of people that love starting businesses there. I think that we're going to see businesses go out, but we're going to see better businesses come back in. Yeah, and certainly middle class and poor people have been really hit hard by this pandemic. And I was reading about how the super rich have gotten richer during this pandemic, which is kind of odd. You'd think we'd all be hit pretty hard. Uh, in fact, most of the wealthy have recovered from the economic downturn, according to uh, some several articles I've read. It would be interesting to um, 
look a little bit further into the data, I would bet that people that had substantial savings were okay through the pandemic. The problem is a lot of Americans don't have savings, and that's for uh, several factors. But there's a, a research report that Treasury did, um, man, it was probably about 10 years ago now, that talked about the churn from the top is actually faster than the churn uh, up the ladder, which means that you're more likely to move down the ladder than you are to, to move up. And so we do see this moving up of the ladder, of the economic ladder, by quite a few people. And once you reach the top, your odds of coming down are fairly large. So while the wealth gap increases, the quality of life has uh, pre-pandemic generally increase for everybody. I think that we'll see a resettling of all of this post-pandemic, and it's an interesting story to watch. But you said the pre-quality of life has increased for everyone else? The, the, well, so pre, pre-pandemic, the quality of life was moving up for everybody else. During the pandemic, we have had a break. So it's going to be an interesting story to see um, uh, post-pandemic how everything kind of refits into the economy. Because there will be an adjustment period as everybody gets back to work, businesses all start back up, and our economy gets back to 100%. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Well, thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube. And call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.